everyone. Welcome back to Stokehouse Sports Report. I'm Elise Garcia with my co-host Bobby DeMuro. You obviously know us by now. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, right? If you've been watching. Well, anyways, if you haven't been watching, welcome. This is a show where we talk everything Stokehouse Sports and sometimes some other random topics. but Movies. Movies and entertainment, but always around sports, always around Southern California, and always a good time. Can you tell we're in Southern California now? It's cloudy and cold. It's it's totally Southern California totally weather. Totally not Southern California weather. <laughs> of course, the token day that we film, it's cloudy and cold. Exactly. Yeah. In <laughs> winter. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Winter, cloudy <laughs> and cold. We're complaining that it's like 65. We know some people out there, it's like literally negative 10. So, sorry, suckers. I know, right? I just told you I was freezing. <laughs> I'm from Southern California. So, for me, this is actually really cool. You Orange County people. <laughs> but anyways, speaking of Southern California and L.A., the Lakers are known to be LA's team. They're not doing so hot this year. Clippers are doing pretty well. And They're great. Right now, they are LA's team. They've set the bar. People love the Clippers. They obviously have now bandwagon fans. Lakers still have their true fans. But what do the Lakers need to do to reclaim that title? What do they need what do they just what do they need to do? I see how you frame that discussion. All the Clippers fans are bandwagon, but oh, the L.A. Lakers fans, they're the true fan. <laughs> okay, so you were obviously a Laker girl, so let me ask you, before we even get into the Lakers this year, can the Lakers reclaim the title of L.A.'s team? The only thing that they can reclaim is their dignity at this point. It is pathetic. Sounds like you worked on that line. No. Oh, just off the cuff. Off all the right. cuff. Well, Not sp- good. Speaking of off the cuff, <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the Lakers. Nobody would have won. Phil Jackson would not have won with the situation going on right now with injuries and whatever else. But you obviously have to remove D'Antoni. I've got a coach for you who I think would be great for the Lakers. You see him on ESPN all the time. He lives down the block from my parents. I'm not even kidding about this in Denver. His name... We're neighbors. My, we're neighbors. His name is George Carl. He's coached three Western Conference championship team, or, you know, to the championship game teams... Denver Nuggets, Seattle Supersonics, Milwaukee Bucks, back when they were in the West, and he's coached superstars, Carmelo, Allen Iverson, Gary Payton, Sean Kemp. When I was doing the rehearsal, I almost called Gary Payton and Sean Kemp Sean Payton from the Saints. He didn't coach the guy from the Saints, but he coached four superstars. He knows how to deal with them. He knows how to deal with Kobe. He's a perfect coach for a big market like this, right? Yeah. No, it sounds like a great addition. Um... Just gonna have to wait and see what happens, but I think that you obviously make a great point, and there's really no one else. What other options do we have? There's not that many. I mean, I, I guess there's a few. You can look at like Byron Scott, you could look at like, you know, I almost said Hubie Brown, which is ridiculous, but Larry Brown is actually in this conversation. I think he's too old, he's like 104. He's older than Jamie Wright. Um, but there's a few other guys you probably could look at. And yeah, maybe, obviously there's always people you can look at. And, and George Carl's had a lot of health problems recently, serious serious health problems. So maybe he doesn't want to coach again. So that is, you know, another factor. But I think he's perfect. He knows the market. He knows how to handle the market. He knows how to handle Kobe, who is not always the most coachable player Kobe's in not the coachable. World. Kobe wants to be coached. Well, now that's an interesting thing. Do you what think if, Kobe's going to coach? I was just going to say, what if Kobe Bryant was a coach? Because back in the day in baseball, you used to have player managers. Right. And, and up to Pete Rose. Pete Rose was a player manager, for God's sakes. Frank Robinson was a player manager. What about Kobe Bryant as player coach? I don't know. Do you think that people would, would play well underneath him? Because he doesn't... He doesn't. Who cares? I'd watch the games. I would watch the games just to see what would happen. The Colorado Rockies in baseball almost did this last year with Jason Giambi. They seriously considered having him being player manager. I'm not even kidding. If it's the right guy in the right situation, it obviously can't happen in every sport. But do you think Kobe's doing that right now? No. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he is. He is doing it off the record. But I don't. I don't think he'll actually become this. Yeah. Damn, it would be interesting. I mean, the (laughs) Lakers are playing so bad that Magic Johnson said that he would help them. Recruit free agents. Well, That's Magic, how bad it, Magic like, Johnson knows a thing or two about getting free agents. So <laughs> yeah, you would think he yeah. did spend nine hundred million dollars on Clayton Kershaw. Um, besides the coach, though, that Kobe thing would be fascinating. We could devote a whole show to that. Mm-hmm. Besides the coach, I think you have to do a couple other things. One of them is free agency. That will work itself out this summer. So let's. It's pointless to kind of look at it now. But one guy to look at maybe in a trade. They need a three-point shooter. What about Randy Foy, Denver Nuggets shooting guard? Supposed to be a great shooter, has been mediocre this year, but if you could bring him in as a three-point shooter and pair him with Kobe and a big man, more to come on that in a second, you could have a real good in-and-out game with a guy like Foy. It'd be great if the players aren't getting injured. Well, yeah. I mean, right now, what is this? This is insane. We have 
the, like literally the entire Lakers team is on the injured list. She's got 24 pages it's of Lakers. It's so injured. bad. Kobe, Gasol, Nash, Jordan Hill, Jody Meeks, now Farmer, and Young. It's just insane. That's the entire team. It got so bad during the Cavalier game that what happened? The <laughs> well, Chris. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. I mean, Chris. They started with seven. Chris came and got injured. Somebody else fell out. And then Robert Sacre got his sixth foul. But you the game. can't. Play you can't play with, with less than five people on the court, so there's a rule that no one knew about. But do you know what's ridiculous about this? The Lakers won that game. Yeah, it's insane. So hey, you at least were not the Cavaliers, okay? <laughs> Lakers were effectively playing four and five, and they won. So it could be worse. You could be it in Cleveland right now. It could definitely be a lot worse. I mean, that kind of that does suck to say that they lost to the Lakers. With but. effectively four <laughs> players and a fifth who couldn't even foul. And the fifth was a big man down low. So theoretically he's fouling all the time and he couldn't touch anybody. And the Cavs still find a way to lose the game at home. Good job, Cleveland. It was still a close game, though. I think we've alienated Cleveland fans. This can never be the Cleveland sports report. <laughs> no, definitely not. Which is fine because it's colder than crap in Cleveland. And we're here in 60-degree weather complaining in L.A. The third thing the Lakers need to do is obviously get a big man. Gasol, we've joked about this before. They gotta, they gotta get rid of him. The f- trading deadline, February twentieth. You got to get rid of him before the trading deadline. I mean, every week he's up for a trade. So uh, he's it's gonna just go. At this point, like, just stop teasing people. Stop, stop <laughs> teasing us. Just trade him. Um, I think the guy you go get Although in the he draft. Did tweet me. So let's go back to that. <laughs> At least, what did what did Paul Gasol say to you? Paul Gasol tweeted me because we both have passion and we both love. Uh, a motivational speaker that gets us going every morning. And so I just reached out to Joe and uh, told him how much I love Robin Sharma, and he responded. Wow. So you're, like, practically famous. I think we're Pogs on our buddies. Do you have a pen? Can I have your autograph? (laughs) We'll save that for later. Wow, Pog Assault tweeted her. The only person who tweets me is my mother. You know, I'm going to stick to the idea that it was him and not his assistant on the back end. That's a good point. Now, what if... Yeah, that's a good point. Do you, you have PR people and assistants? Oh, yeah. or, no, it's totally Paul. Totally. <laughs> that's what I'm sticking to. That's totally. what I'm thinking. Did you call him Paul? Like, did you just say, oh, hey, yeah, Paul? yeah, we're on a first name basis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's the highlight of the SoCal Sports Report yeah, this week. Well, uh, you want to get your last topic in? Or no, I'm, I'm happy with Paul. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We've talked about this extensively. L.A. has been talking about this for years, ever since the Rams left but now potentially people thought that the Rams were maybe coming back because Grinky or not Grinky, not the Dodgers <laughs> Grinky the owner of the St. Louis Rams just bought 60 acres of land in Inglewood sparking rumors that maybe potentially the NFL team was coming back to LA we've talked about this before can LA sustain an NFL team do they want an NFL team is USC enough of an NFL team and for the record, we are not drunk. We're totally sober, even though we're stumbling <laughs> over words and we're joking about Pogasol. This is dead serious sports talk. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, straighten up the back a little bit. L.A. cannot, well, they can support an NFL team, but it won't happen now, and it won't be the Rams, and this 60-acre deal is a bunch of crap. Cranky is playing everybody off each other. Here's the thing. Honestly, we talked about this. The Rams have a, a clause, I guess you'd say, in their lease contract at the Jones Dome in St. Louis that if they are not upgraded at the end of 2014 to be one of the top eight NFL stadiums, and there's, you know, a delineation, I don't know what it is, but there's a top eight. If they don't upgrade into that top eight, their lease becomes a year-to-year lease. The, the city has a year now, or ten months, to upgrade this. If they don't, Cranky knows he can maybe get a little more out of them on the year-to-year lease. And if they do, he forces their hand by buying this land, and they get a better stadium. It's, it's a win-win for Cranky. He's a businessman. You go develop that land in Inglewood. Or what you were saying was sort of coming out as a rumor, maybe you put another MLS team down there. Yeah, so latest news. Apparently he has uh, licensing rights to a new MLS team, which to me sounds crazy because ten minutes from... Inglewood is Carson where the Galaxy play at Home Depot. So it's just kind of like one of those things like is there even a market for another soccer team here in LA? Remember folks, if you don't think one MLS team is enough <laughs> try <laughs> two. two. <laughs> I just, I, I, why would you put, I mean I don't even want to talk about soccer on this show because I don't care. We, it's worse we need than to hockey. talk about soccer. I would, I would do a weekly show about hockey before I mention soccer once. <laughs> 
I'm not even. It is. What is it that you have against soccer? I just they walk around for 90 minutes. The clock never stops. Stoppage time. I don't understand stoppage time. I don't know anything about the game. I don't know why you can't use your hands. Okay, maybe I'll teach you a little thing about soccer, and you can teach me how to actually throw a baseball. I think I just want a candy bar, and I want to take a nap. <laughs> I'm grumpy. Anyways, <laughs> all right. But I still want to talk about NFL. I still want to talk about football, even though the Super Bowl just happened. But we are in Southern California. We have to talk about the Chargers. They lost to the Broncos in the AFC Divisional Championship 24-17. to But uh, Rivers was actually able to take them there all the way. They won five out of their last six games before the championship game. And so um, I think he's... You know, he's a comeback player of the year. He just won that title. Yeah. He just won that honor. I think he's really set up for an awesome season next season, and they have the potential to go all the way. You disagree. Ooh. I mean, all the way is... Woo. You're talking about all the way. Everybody the way. has the potential to go. Well, the Jaguars have the potential to go all the way if they drop down to, like, NCAA Division Three. <laughs> yes, they do have the potential to go all the way. I, I agree with you. I think the future is really bright for San Diego. Literally almost everyone comes back. Ryan Matthews and Danny Woodhead in the backfield. Denario Alexander, Eddie Royal, Keenan Allen as wide receivers. Um, Antonio Gates, who's on the downside of his career in, as, a, as a tight end. And Ladarius Green, who's sort of the new Antonio Gates. And then everyone come back on defense. They need to re-sign Donald Butler, the linebacker. Uh, and then they've got two guys, sort of a, hey, how you doing? We forgot you're on the team. <laughs> oh, Mevin hi. Ingram. Oh, hey. Hey there. Mevin Ingram and Dwight Freeney both only played four games due to injury last year. So if they come back healthy, it's like picking up two free agents. The the one kind of halfway major concern is they're going to need a backup quarterback. Charlie Whitehurst leaves. He was worthless. He was the guy with the long. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if he signed with anybody yet oh, as a free agent, but he's the guy with like the long surfer hair. I loved him. He had great hair for San Diego. But he'll leave. I think you go get Matt Barkley, who we will talk about on a future episode so as a backup quarterback. Matt Barkley. Maybe well, as a backup, but Rivers plays all the time, so it's almost a move. Yeah. Play. But the point is, everybody's back. They've got a great roster. My only concern is Denver and Kansas City don't get worse. They're really good. So do the Chargers really leapfrog both of those teams? I just think that they come back stronger next year and really give them a run for their money. I guess if you're going to play four div- – okay, Oakland's out. They're terrible. Yeah. But if you're going to play the other four divisional games in the AFC West, two in, two against Denver, two against Kansas City, the best you can hope to do is realistically two and two, and you probably will go one and three against those two teams. So if you go one and three against those two teams, can you make up another, you know, eight and three on the other – or eight and four on the other – 12 games to to be what nine and seven, ten and six, make the playoffs, Most lose in the division no. round. But it is the NFL, and every week there are surprises. And somebody could get injured, and I just a lot can happen. I just think as good as the Chargers look, they're being blocked in their own division by two other good teams. Yeah, no, they are really good. So, so sorry, I kind of killed your buzz on that one. No, you know, you just I don't have an LA team, so I need another team to root for. <laughs> or you got an MLS team. Two. Two MLS <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, enough about MLS and sports for this week. Catch us next week on SoCal Sports Report. Bobby DeMuro, Elise Garcia. We'll see you next week.